Ooh, <laughs> jump scare for days. <laughs> Welcome back to another exciting episode of Southern Sorcery. We have part two of our commander giveaway series. This is for Dusk Morn, the pre-con commander's commander decks, I should say. And this one is called Jump Scare, as I just demonstrated for you. <laughs> hey, Mr. Wallace. Oh. This one is the Simic deck and is uh, very centric into landfall and or like morph, like turning things face up, face down. A lot of triggers there. I'm excited for this one. I think it's going to be very fun and really cool. Um, without further ado, let's just jump into things. Uh, first off, I wanted to say, if you you're a first time viewer just to comment and say hey uh, we want to reach out to all of our first time viewers and thank you for tuning in for us for the first time and just uh, and just meet you digitally you know if we could meet you in person we could we give you the handshake for show uh, but we can't do that through YouTube that's not a feature that's yet been yet designed but um, excited to get into that um, if you want to win this deck as uh, like I said before we're giving away all of these decks shipping included um, all you gotta do is comment and talk about like what you would add uh, maybe thoughts on like what we did just a thoughtful comment a thoughtful answer about the deck either the review that we did or um, what you would change possibly as well just something like that uh, and if you are in the contiguous United States uh, uh, we will ship that out to you, like I said, for free. And don't worry if you're international or outside the U.S., we will reach out to you if you're selected as a winner, a winner, and we will get you a gift card, and so you can go get it yourself. Uh, that's just due to shipping costs right now being almost more than the deck itself, so it doesn't really make much sense to spend all that money on shipping when we could just get you a gift card and you can go get it yourself. You know, hopefully it's your LGS or through Amazon or however you can get a deck. Um, we'll make it happen. We want everyone to be included and have a winning chance, uh, but... Without further ado, let's get into the deck itself. I want to start off with the face commander and the uh, the alternative commander. Uh, first off, we have Zamone, Mystery Unraveler. We've seen Zamone before in previous sets. She is a legendary creature human wizard that is a 3-3 with a landfall trigger. Landfall trigger is whenever a land you control enters, manifest dread if this is the first time this ability has resolved this turn. Otherwise, you may turn a permanent you control face up, which is really cool because you get to manipulate um, morph cards or the cards you've uh, manifested or manifest dreaded. Dreaded, manifest dreaded, manifested or manifested dreaded. <laughs> what, a, what a crazy conundrum. Um, anywho, uh, what manifest dread is, it's very similar to manifest, but manifest dread says look at the top card, top two cards of your library. Put one into the battlefield face down as a 2-2 two -two creature and the other into your graveyard. Turn it face up anytime for its mana cost if it's a creature card so um gives you a little bit more opportunity to find a creature card that you want to manifest um or maybe it's a land you want to manifest and just have a creature versus a land so a lot of a little bit of options there too uh and then just that landfall trigger you know that first one where you get to uh, manifest dread or turn something face up it's i, I like that I, I think this is a fun landfall deck it's a little different than some of the other landfall decks before because it's including uh morph and uh manifesting which is a really cool concept in magic that probably hasn't been explained Exploited enough. I mean, there's obviously decks around it, but um, with this being a pre-con specifically for both landfall and uh, manifest slash morph, uh, there's a lot of like cool things you can put in the in the deck that are very cheap because those mechanics aren't terribly expensive based upon like their unique abilities and being like streamlined into this, just those type of decks versus other types of decks. But without further ado, let's talk about uh, Kion, uh, Corrupted Memory. This is a 2-2 two -two illusion for two and Simic, green, blue. Uh, as long as Kion's power is even, you may cast non-creature spells as though they had flash, which is cool. And then on the flip side, if uh, the power is odd, you may cast creature spells as though they had flash. And here's how you can flip that back and forth. Whenever you draw a card, put a plus one, plus one counter on Kion. Um, really cool. I like the flavor. It's, it's, it's just, you know, it's kind of like spooky, you know, chaotic a little bit, but still has like uh, Simic vibes because you're playing things at flash speed. So like instant speed. Um, I, I think that's really cool and flavorful. Plus the artwork is really neat. Um, I like all the artwork in this Dustborn set. They did a good job for uh, for the spooky season. While you're here is probably to find out what some of the new cards in the set are. So let's just dive into the new cards for this commander deck. Uh, we'll start off with a creature called Glitch Interpreter. Uh, Glitch Interpreter is two and a blue for a human wizard. When it 
it enters, if you control no face down permanents, return it to its owner's hand and then manifest dread. Um, whenever one or more colors creatures you control deal combat damage to a player, draw a card. So this fits both ways of the commander. You're drawing cards, so you get plus one plus one counter, so you can bounce back and forth between flash for creatures or flash for non-creature spells. And then obviously if you don't have face down permanents, this is this card can give you the opportunity to go ahead and manifest dread and get a face down creature. Um, so very, very flavorful and on theme for both commanders. After that, we've got a curator beastie, which reminds the artwork specifically reminds me of like world the, where the wild things are, like that old children's book. I owe you, Max. You led me right to him. Maybe a little more scary because it's not as friendly, but uh, this is a four and two green creature for six, six. It's a beast that has reach, so it can block as though it had flying. Colorless creatures you control enter with two additional plus one plus one counters on them, which is relevant because when you manifest or morph a creature, those creatures are considered colorless. So a lot of those like colorless, like um, anthems or boosters are relevant in this type of deck because you get all the benefits because they're technically colorless creatures. Uh, but whenever it enters or attacks, you get to manifest dread. So more of that on theme, trying to get as many cards as you can face down and manipulate those face down cards. Uh, a lot of cool ways to, uh, to just swing out with those as well. You can keep them face down as two twos and just have an army of two two colorless, you know, face down creatures. After that, we have uh, a ter terrifying card. Reminds me of the Toy Story, the the Sids, all of his toys, the little like you know manipulated toys that he like would take a, a doll's head and put it on like a you know machine. Uh, yeah, that's what it reminds me of, the artwork again, but Giggling Skitter Spike. Uh, for four, it's a 1-1 one, one artifact creature that is a toy. It's indestructible. Uh, this says, when Giggling Skitter Spike attacks, blocks, or becomes a target of a spell, it deals damage equal to its power to each opponent. And then it has five for monstrosity five. If this creature isn't monstrous, put five plus one plus one counters on it and it becomes monstrous. So you could make it a six six in this in indestructible six six that whenever it attacks blocks or becomes target of a spell, it deals damage equal to its power to each opponent that could become six. So pretty nasty little card. Uh, I'm sure there's tons of ways to manipulate that and and deal damage across the board, kinda like you would with like stuffy doll almost. Um, following that, we have Shriekwood Devourer. This is a tree folk that's not, you know, normally the tree folks are like old and wise and kind of like your ally. This, this one is more like Evil Dead Tree where it's like absolutely terrifying and trying to kill you. Ouch! What do you think you're doing? And absorb your soul. Um, but Shriekwood Devourer is five and two green for a seven, five tree folk with trample. Uh, but whenever you attack with one or more creatures, untap up to X lands, where X is the greatest power among those creatures. So pretty relevant in a landfall deck where you have a lot of lands and you're constantly bringing in extra lands. It's a, a good way to like untap and and always have that you know access to mana, especially with your other commander saying you have flash uh, for different cards. It's always good to have open mana on other turns. So this card really fits the theme of the deck as well. Uh, following that, we have Disorienting Choice. This is three and a green for a sorcery. For each opponent, choose up to one target artifact or enchantment that player controls for each permanent chosen this way. Its controller may exile it. Then if one or more of the chosen permanents are still on the battlefield, you search your library for up to that many land cards, put them onto the battlefield tap, then shuffle. So a way to get rid of some stuff, and then if there is some stuff left over from said stuff, um, you get to go get the difference in uh, land cards, which is pretty neat. So for a land card, landfall deck specifically that's pretty pretty helpful so an interesting card that they've developed to kind of like go fetch you know uh lands or and as well deal with like issues so i, I don't know i dig it then we have one of our first rooms i'm going to zoom in on this so i can read it because it's sideways but this is um an enchantment room called experimental lab and staff room if you cast experimental lab you get when you unlock this door manifest dread then put two plus one plus one counters on a and a trample counter on that creature so relevant for your other commander um Keon. or you have staff room which says whenever a creature you control deals combat damage to a player turn that creature face up or put a plus one plus one counter on it so another way to morph things in, in kind of a cheaty way um so i i, I dig it i kind of like these rooms i said this in the last video i'll probably say it again but i don't know the room mechanic seems pretty pretty unique I, I like the whole theme behind the rooms following that we have growing dread which is enchantment with flash so you can play at instant speed uh, it is a Simic, so green and blue, Flash, when growing, Dread enters Manifest Dread, so you get to go look at the top two cards, put one on the field face down uh, as a 2-2 two -two creature, and then put one in the graveyard. Uh, and then whenever you turn a permanent face up, put a plus one plus one counter on it, so it's nice, you get a payoff for uh, morphing, mega morphing, manifesting, you know, whatever the concept may be, uh, you get payoffs for turning things face up. 
I like it. Uh, after that, we have a pretty creepy card. Um, they came from the pipes. This card's artwork is terrifying. It's just a bunch of hands coming out of pipes. It reminds me of like the back rooms videos. If you ever seen those, it's very creepy and like industrial looking, and it's always like just these ominous like monsters but it's an enchantment for four in a blue that says when they came from the pipes enters manifest red twice so you get to do that manifesting red twice uh and then you get more payoffs for face down stuff whenever a face down creature you control enters draw a card which is good because as you're drawing cards your other commander can get plus one plus one counters and start to you know pick and choose between what has flash and what doesn't so again just more on theme stuff they did they went very on theme with like the two specific mechanics here manifesting dread and um landfall which i like uh, after that, we've got uh, Zamone's Hypothesis. Uh, this artwork is also really cool because it reminds me of like Ghostbusters. She's got like a little like ray gun, and it's like disorienting some of the monsters. So it's very kind of like Ghostbustery, uh, which makes sense because she's got like a detective. Like you know, she's she's on the case. Like can figure out like what the ghosts are doing or what the monsters are doing, I, I dig it. But for three and two blue, this is an instant that says you may put a plus one plus one counter on a creature, then choose odd or even. You return each creature with power of the chosen quality to its owner's hand, zero is considered even. So a cool way to use your, again, you know, use your sub commander uh, and add those plus one plus one counters or just make something a little bigger if you want and then bounce a bunch of stuff, I dig it. Um, especially if all your stuff's two twos, all those morph cards you haven't messed with and they're all two twos, so it's all even. Uh, then you get to um, bounce a bunch of odd stuff and hopefully clear the board out for you to win the game. Uh, so yeah, cool card. It has the commander on it, so it just fits the deck even better. After that, we have the new scheme cards. Uh, this is for um, uh, the Arch Enemy. Now that we have Arch Enemy specifically for Commander, we've got this set has you know a bunch of those what we call scheme cards. Again, we're gonna make a video where we explain this in more detail, but for now we're just gonna cover the cards it comes with. The, the schemes are what helps the Arch Enemy basically become so powerful that you can face, you can be the Arch Enemy and face three other players and it still be a level playing field, almost uneven. It's it's almost tough, but uh, the first one is called Chaos is My Plaything. This is a scheme that says, when you set this scheme in motion for each opponent, exile target permanent that player controls, then each player reveals cards from the top of their library until they reveal a permanent card and puts it onto the battlefield and puts the rest on the bottom of their library in a random order. So it's almost like a, a chaos warp on steroids for everybody in a way. Yeah, pretty cool card. The artwork on it's really cool. It's, again, it's kind of like the Ghostbusters stuff where it has like the, what are they called? Like the, the EM em something readers where it's like the static and the radio frequencies. It's like you can detect ghosts with a little box. I like that. After that, we have I Am Untouchable. I Am Untouchable is an ongoing scheme, which means it just kind of remains face up until it's um, abandoned. You and permanent you control have hexproof. When combat damage is dealt to you, create a 4 4 colorless scarecrow artifact creature token with vigilance, then abandon this scheme. Pretty cool, because um, it gives you hexproof as a player and your permanent hexproof, which is just nasty. And then if someone gets through, then you get a nice 4-4 color scarecrow and all those boosts you're getting for colorless creatures matters because that 4-4 scarecrow is colorless so hmm, pretty good card yeah after that we have nil before my legions it's a scheme uh when you set this scheme in motion choose one create a 4-4 color scarecrow artifact creature with vigilance or creatures you control get plus three plus three and get vigilance and trample until the turn it was bonkers because this deck specifically with this all those two twos are five fives now uh with vigilance and trample like uh, it's, it's pretty mean like i said man it's it's not unfair for a 3v1 it's almost the opposite it's like the the arch enemy is like super powerful so never sleep on on these scheme cards um following that we have mine is the only truth which is super ominous uh it's an ongoing scheme uh, ongoing schemes are they may rain face up until they're abandoned but whenever a player casts a spell you draw a card holy moly um at the beginning of your upkeep if you draw a card if you drew a card last turn, uh, abandon this game. So pretty cool. Like you're going to get a full turn cycle of them drawing cards and you drawing cards, and then you're going to get a massive payoff for it. So imagine if that just stayed without getting abandoned. Just you, whenever y'all draw cards, I draw cards. Pretty pretty disgusting. Following this, we have you are unworthy of mercy. Uh, the artwork on this is super super creepy as well. Uh, when you set this scheme in motion, each opponent sacrifices a non-land permanent. If you control six or more lands, each opponent sacrifices three non-land permanents instead. Again, for this deck that's a landfall deck where it goes and gets lands and wants to see lands, this is going to be pretty relevant. Um, pretty nasty card. 
Uh, following that, this is the main baddie, uh, who kind of looks like a moth slash spider slash demon slash just terrifying nightmare. Um, <laughs> you will know suffering is what the card's name is. You set when you set this game in motion, it deals damage equal to your commander's mana value to each non-commander creature your opponent's control. In this deck, pretty good, but in other decks with Arch Enemy, this could be disgusting due to like you know. And that's the thing is like your Arch Enemy deck can kind of like be tweaked a little bit too, like your schemes and stuff, so you can make it to where it fits like the deck you're gonna run. So the very complementary of the two, uh, which I find very entertaining. Um, following that, we have another card for uh, the arch enemy set and this is your own face mocks you which is creepy right your own face mocks you uh when you set this scheme of motion choose up to two target creatures your opponent's control for each one create a token that's a copy of it if you create a fewer than two tokens this way create a number of four four colorless character artifact creature tokens with vigilance equal to the difference so either way you're getting a massive payoff for basically matching your opponents if you're the arch enemy matching your opponents like uh, board state with creatures Creatures, or you're getting a bunch of uh, scarecrows, which is nice because they're colorless with vigilance, and you've got a bunch of colorless ways, uh, you know, to, to boost stuff with uh, all your morph stuff in play already. So again, pretty nasty. And the last card is called your plan. Your plans mean nothing. <clears throat> when you set this game in motion, any number of target players each discard their hands. Each opponent draws cards equal to the number of cards that player discarded minus one. Then if you discard a card this way, draw seven cards. Gross. Just so gross. Uh, but those are the uh, arch enemy cards that this deck comes with. Again, they're just, they're so bonkers. It's fun. I can't wait to play it. Like, I, I think it's so fun to play arch enemy because like, it's like two headed giant, but like, you know, common theme, three players. It's just such a unique way to play the game. I'm, I'm excited for it. So we'll have a video for that explaining the rules. It, it'll be a short video. It's not overly complicated. So that's another fun thing is it's pretty streamlined. If you know how to play commander, it's really easy to pick this game up or this version of the game up as well. But those are the new cards that this deck comes with. Let me know your thoughts. Let me know like what you like, what you don't like. Um, I think it's, you know, they did a good job with building these decks and making them like on theme with like their mechanics. But uh, moving on to another part that I love to discuss is let's talk about our additions and subtractions again we always set ourselves up with a $50 budget um, we try to stay within that this time I was well with under budget um, didn't do a lot of tweaking sometimes I like to take a lot of lands out for my tweaking because they tend to like overpopulate lands but like where this is a landfall deck um, I wanted to keep the land count fairly high so 38 lands is what it comes with so I just kept it at 38 lands I didn't cut lands for anything else. If I, I cut two lands, but I replaced them with two more lands, so I kept it at 38. So not as many additions here, but I think very meaningful ones that can help accelerate what this deck is already trying to do. Um, so first, let's just talk about you know what we removed. Uh, the first card I removed is uh, Scab uh, Ruinator uh, for uh, Uro, Titan of Nature's Wrath. This card used to be super expensive, um, but now it is very affordable, so very easy to slot into a lot of decks. Um, you can get them for about, you know, two upper, upper twos to three dollars um but what uro, uro says uh whenever it enters the battlefield sacrifice it unless it escaped uh but whenever uro enters the battlefield or attacks you gain three life and draw a card then you may put a land card from your hand onto the battlefield so landfall trigger loves to see that plus drawing cards you know your other face commander loves to see that as well and then the escape cost is two blue two green exile five of the cards from your graveyard which you will be putting cards in your graveyard uh with uh the the Manifest Dread ability, so it's not terribly difficult to fill your cards up to exile to get Uro back in the graveyard, back in and out of the graveyard. So easy add, I think. Plus, it's a six-six at the end of the day. Still, you know, beefy creature that can attack and do damage. Uh, and then the landfall trigger, the drawing trigger, and then even gaining three life can sometimes be relevant. So I thought it was an easy add. Um, after that, I took out Hydra Omnivore for Experimental Twelve. Experimental 12 is a creature card that's an elf lizard wiz warrior. Uh, it's a 4-4 that's 3 and a green with trample. And uh, whenever it or another creature you control is turned face up, put a plus one plus one counter on that creature equal to its power. And then it has disguise. So even if you don't uh, manifest this card, you can pay the disguise cost, which is 4 and a green. You may cast this card face down for three colorless and then turn it face up for the four in the green as a two two creature with ward two and when it's face down and then you can turn up face up anytime like i said for his disguise cost so it's kind of like morph actually except you get ward two which is even better because then they have to pay two extra to target the creature um makes perfect sense because it's payoff again like for any of the stuff you turn face up it's going to get payoffs because it's going to get plus one plus one counters equal to its power that it already has so 
pretty darn cool. Uh, after that, we've got um, we cut uh, Rashimi, or, I'm sorry, Rashmi, Eternity's Crafter for Den Protector. Den Protector is one in a green for a human warrior with two one. Uh, creatures with power less than Den Protector's power can't block it. And then it has Mega Morph. <laughs> you may cast this card face down as a two two creature for three. Then turn it face up any time for its Mega Morph cost and put a plus one plus one counter on it. So the difference between Morph and Mega Morph is those counters, or it has some other like ability. So Morph is just kind of like plain Jane, but Mega Morph like adds a little bit of flavor to the morphing. Uh, but one of the cool things about it is whenever Den, tar Den Protector is turned face up, return target card from your graveyard to your hand. So if you've manifested dread something into the yard that you need back in your hand, this card now can go get that for you. So it, it's on theme. Um, I dig it. It's, it's a good card. And plus it's only, you know, what what Den Protector we paid uh, duh, 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 22 cents for it. Pretty darn cheap. Um, after that, one of the more expensive cards, and a card that I just I put ad nauseum in any landfall deck. It, it's it, no shocker here. Uh, we cut uh, Greater Tanuki for Azusa, Lost But Sinking. It's just too good in landfall decks not to have. Azusa is two and a green for a human monk that is a one two, and it says you may play two additional lands on each of your turns just for landfall triggers because you've got Scoot Swarm in this deck, you've got so many landfall triggers in this deck like it's, she's just too good not to add and she's you know not cheap but she's not like terribly expensive either for like you can get an azusa now for around eight to ten dollars depending on you know the condition and what you, you know what set it's from but like gosh it's so powerful it's so you can't ignore it um following that we cut uh sandworm convergence uh for a card that i love for anything that you play with face down stuff so secret plans um, for a green and a blue, it's an enchantment. It says face down creatures you control get plus O plus one. And then the kicker here, whenever a permanent you control is turned face up, draw a card. Bonkers. And it's so cheap. You can get one for five cents, a nickel. Um, it's great. Just an easy add for any deck that wants to have face down stuff. That's probably why it's so cheap because it's so specific, plus it's uncommon and, be re and, and it's been reprinted. But just a no brainer for any deck that wants to run like manifest cards, uh, morph cards, you know, whatever the case is. Um, after that, we decided to get rid of Cackling Counterpart uh, for an instant that I think goes into any landfall deck. It's called Haro. Um, for Tuna Green, uh, as additional cost to cast a spell, you sacrifice land, but you get a payoff here because you search your library for the two basic land cards, put them both in the battlefield, and shuffle your library. So landfall trigger, landfall trigger for the cost of one land. It, it's great. You're always going to have land advantage in landfall decks. And so, like, sacrificing land isn't a big deal to go get two lands. You just want those triggers. Thinking of Scoot Swarm, you're thinking of, like, you know, all these landfall stuff that's just going to make either tokens or get you cards or get you mana so just a no-brainer for that card again another very cheap card you can get these for around 40 cents um actually kind of pretty expensive for a common but uh after that we decided to cut dig through time uh for another card similar to haro uh this card is called entus restoration it's from the lord of the rings set it's the tree folks that are nice not mean like the other card we talked about earlier um but this is for two and a green it's an instant it says sacrifice a land search your library for up to two basic land cards and put them onto the battlefield tap then shuffle so almost identical to haro there but it has this little subtext that says, if you control a creature with power four or greater, instead search library for up to three basic land cards, put them on the battlefield tab. So it's almost a little bit better than Haro and not too hard to get because you're putting plus one, plus one counters on stuff. A lot of these morph creatures can get bu can get buffed. So a really good card to add here, plus landfall triggers matter. So just an easy add. Again, we took out Dig Through Time for that one. Anthus Restoration, you get them for like two bucks. They're not terribly expensive. Um, following that, such a fun card that I, I'm so happy that we uh, we added. This is um, we took away oversimplify for a creature called uh, Igsradon, and this is an illusion that's three and two blue. It's a, basically just like it's, it's trying to find like a specific number for its power and toughness, and I'll explain it here. Uh, as Igsradon enters the battlefield, turn all other non-creature cards face down, which matters because you can just fl everybody's board is now turned face down, um, and they don't get to turn stuff face up because most of your stuff doesn't have morph or you know other ways to like manipulate it. So you get the advantage where they don't. Um, and then its power and toughness are each equal to the number of face down creature cards on the battlefield. It's not just what you control, but everywhere. So this card can be huge. I mean, let's say you're playing a token deck. They've got, you know, 24 poor flying pegasuses. You play this. Now it's all just, they're just generic 2-2 two -two face down colorless creatures. And this thing is now plus 20, plus 20, plus whatever you have on your board and all your other opponents. Just a bonkers card for a deck where you're trying to manipulate stuff like that. And then you can still turn your stuff face. They, they're, they're just stuck unless they have a way to like undo what just happened those cards are now face down permanently so very good card to add 
also very cheap it's for a quarter so for a quarter you can turn the entire board down uh, all the creatures onto it face down which is bonkers um following that um we cut uh oversimplify i'm sorry ether gale um for exploration exploration just says you may play additional land on each of your turns um this is you know where most of our budget went because this card's around like 20 bucks but with so you know so like all these other cards being like pennies on the dollar this this one i splurge for i normally don't for a $20 card, but like, it's just too good. You know, anytime you can play those extra lands, you're drawing cards, you know, you're manifesting stuff. Like you got all these like abilities to like put cards into your hand and just being able to drop multiple lands with the landfall trigger is just, it's too good. Have to add it. Um, and then here's the lands we cut, um, re replaced with other better lands. I cut Temple of Mystery. I, I don't mind the scribe. I just hate lands that come in tapped. Um, but this card, uh, Branch of V2 Ghazi, um, you add, you can add a colorless and it has the Disguise 3 mechanic. So you can actually play this card face down uh, for three as a 2 2 creature with Ward 2. And then you can turn it face up in time for that Disguise cost of three. So it becomes that land that can tap for colorless. But the cool thing is when it is turned face up, you get to add two mana of any color until the end of turn. You don't lose this mana as steps and phases end. So just a really cool card that can, you know, again, see benefit from, um, you know, being turned face up, turned face down, you know, just being a 2-2 creature that they can be buffed with all these other, you know, colors creatures. So I think just a really cool utility land that makes sense for the deck. And then our last and final land, we cut Quandrix Campus for Zotaic Cavern. Um, this is very similar to the same vein of things. It's a, you can tap for a colorless or you can morph it. Uh, so you can cast it face down as a 2-2 for three or you can pay that morph cost for two. It doesn't have a face up trigger, but again, at worst it's a land that taps for mana, at, you know, or you can throw it as a creature, attack with it, and then if you need mana later, you can turn it face up and then boom, there's a land that taps for colorless. I think these are more important and overall more on theme for what you're trying to do versus those other two lands. But again, we spent probably about $35 of our $50 budget. There's probably more stuff I could have like added for more expensive, but these were the thoughts that I had. Uh, again, to compete, just let me know for if you want to win this deck, just, you know, what did we do right? You know, what would you change? Did you like what we did? You know, just make a thoughtful comment again. Uh, and if you're new, please say hi. Just say, hey, we're new, love your content or hate your content so we can know what we're doing wrong or right. <laughs> uh, but we appreciate everyone, uh, you know, entering in, commenting, liking, subscribing. It goes a long way. Thank you to all our patrons. You know, their names are always on screen. Uh, Falling down there. Click the deck. The deck link is below as well. We'll have all the deck lists out uh, for the Moxfield links for, for these decks. So if you want to try to like match what we did or just find out, you know, some of the changes, um, you can go there. Um, if you're interested in becoming a patron, this is my spiel. Um, all of our our, uh, levels are open right now so if you want to get into some of these deck techs of your own or you want to get into some box breaks for some cheaper packs from magic um, come check us out we're doing a ton of stuff we, we'd love to uh, to have you in our discord as well so maybe we can catch some games together we've got all the socials down below click all the buttons we thank you so much for everything you guys are amazing uh, but we hope you're having a spooky time going through these dustborn commander sets i'm excited to do some more for you and we'll see you on the next video until then bye